Happy Friday, Minties. This is the Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition. And today, join me as I give you an advanced look at the Swamp Thing by Nancy Collins Omnibus from DC Comics. So please stay tuned. Now, before I get started, I want to thank the folks at DC Comics for sending us an advanced copy of the book. And I say advanced copy because the book was originally supposed to come out in the direct market on April 1st. However, due to the things that are happening at Diamond Comics, things have been pushed back. But rest assured, the book is coming out still. So let's take a look at this book that I did not see coming or ever being published in an omnibus edition. So one of the things I wanted to point out, it's not just Nancy Collins' name on the book. There's also the artists down here. You have Scott Eaton and Kim DeMolder and Tatana Wood. I'm so sorry. I'm probably mispronouncing that. Here's what the spine looks like. DC logo, and of course, I'm sure you've probably noticed the DC Black Label line, which is a little weird, right? Because if you're familiar with her run at all, you know that the very first Vertigo title was during her run here. So the retail price of this book is $125. Let's look at it without the dust jacket. And speaking of dust jacket, the dust jacket has this flat tone to it, so it doesn't have a glossy or semi-gloss finish to it but it has a flatter tone kind of like the swamp thing by alan moore standard size hardcovers if you remember those that's what this feels like here is the gorgeous image by charles vess on the front and actually i really like the design of this there's the back and the spine i really like this design on the actual hardboard here all right so let's take a look in this book Swamp Thing by Nancy Collins Omnibus. All the artists over there on the left-hand side. A lot of names you may be familiar with. The cover artist, the collection cover artist, and then, of course, Swamp Thing, created by Len Wein and Bernie Wrightson. The table of contents here. And before we go any further, you have the group editor up here, Jeb Woodard, and the collection editor, Alex Galler, uh, the design director, Steve Cook, and all the people that brought this book together for us. Here's the table of contents with the pages of the issues. And then you get this introduction by Nancy Collins. So kicking it off with issue 110. And there's a note here from the editor, Stuart Moore, or the editor at the time. So you have issues of Swamp Thing 110 to 139. And then annual number six. Actually, I think this is annual number six. And annual number seven. That's what kicks off this run. And Nancy Collins was a horror writer that was up in the running for the writing Swamp Thing. So Swamp Thing after Alan Moore got kind of weird. Let's talk a little bit about Swamp Thing and then talk about this book here. And why I'm surprised it actually came out in omnibus format. So I'm sure I don't have to tell anybody, but you all know of Alan Moore's run on Swamp Thing. Whether you've read it or not, I'm sure if you've been reading comic books for a while or even a year, somebody at one time or other or some YouTube channel has praised how great the Alan Moore run on Swamp Thing was. And rightly so. But after Alan Moore left, I mean, he did all these wonderful things. He created a bunch of mythos. He completely changed the character of Alec Holland, who is Swamp Thing, and he made it his own thing. So what do you do after one of the greatest writers of all time leaves your book, your title? Well, you keep on going. And I appreciated some of the things that a lot of the writers try to do, like uh, Rick Vait. He tried to keep some of the elements of Swamp Thing by Alan Moore in his run. And then you had Doug Wheeler. And honestly, it's not like they were horrible writers by any means or anything. It was just that the title wasn't doing as good as it once was with Alan Moore. So... In comes Nancy A. Collins, who was a horror writer at the time. And she was up in the running to write this book right here, the Swamp Thing book. And she was a big fan of the original run by Len Wein and Bernie Wrightson. And I believe she also enjoyed Alan Moore's run. But she came into it. And added her own mythos and fleshed out a character of uh, Tifi, Tifi, I believe is how you say her name. And I don't want to give away who 
that character is or how she is related to Swamp Thing, if she is at all. But she created this character here, Lady Jane, who is a spirit of the swamp and almost acts like a babysitter. She gave Alec, who is a plant, right, a living plant, Swamp Thing, and Abby real life issues and problems to deal with that real marriages deal with. And she also placed them in Louisiana. So she gave us a real landscape to look at with real people. Like a lot of the characters from this book, she based on real people. And honestly, Lady Jane, I don't know if you've ever heard of this character, but her backstory is heartbreaking. So it's amazing how she ties it all in together. Um, and it's weird because this is a run that doesn't really get talked about a lot. The only reason I remember reading this run was because of a friend of mine that was reading Swamp Thing at the time, um, when I was collecting X-Men, and we'll go back to that because that's not the only time I'm going to mention X-Men because of a certain artist on here, but he was like, dude, you're not reading Swamp Thing? And I was like, nah, dude, I gave that up after Alan Moore left, I tried, and it just wasn't for me, and he let me borrow the, uh, all her first issues, like her first year, so like the first 12 issues, including the annual, and I was hooked. I love the elements that she added herself into it. Even though she also borrowed some from Alan Moore, she was able to do her own thing and create her own characters and just bring back that life that was missing from this book. And of course, I mean, she wasn't alone, right? She had a complete talent pool of artists to draw from. You had Mark Buckingham, Scott Eaton, Charles Vess, Jan Dursima, Phil Hester, Tom Mandrake, and the one guy I was going to talk about is Bill Jaska. Now, Bill did some of the artwork in here. He didn't do all of it. But the one thing that I remember him drawing that stood out to me, and I'll go back here to showcase his artwork, but he did a couple of fill-in issues of Uncanny X-Men. It's the ones where Forge and Banshee are searching for the missing X-Men. Forge and Banshee refuse to believe that they are dead and they're stuck in the sewers and there's a flashback of Forge. But anyway, this is not an X-Men episode. But I just remember the creepy artwork standing out, uh, particularly with Jean Grey's mutated arms. And he, he eventually did some issues of Hulk. And of course he did this. But I always wonder, anytime I... I leave comic books, I always wonder what happened to these artists that I once enjoyed. And sadly, he his his life didn't have a happy ending. Like, he, he unfortunately got out of the art world, and I mean, there's some really sad articles online that I read a few years ago about what ended up happening to him, and it's really sad, because I always picture him as like this artist, right? I mean, whenever you picture these as a young kid or no matter how old you are sometimes, you always picture them as all these um, almost like immortal beings, if you will, right? That are completely untouchable by real life events. Of course, the older you get, the more you realize how ridiculous that is. So I'm always saddened to find out that somebody's art that I really liked eventually, you know, passed away in, in not the happiest of ways. But... She was joined by all these wonderful artists, and I want to point out, let's see if I can find it, I believe that's 128, so let me see if I can find it, 129, yes, right here, issue 129, so this had the original Vertigo label on it, so this is the very first comic book that had Vertigo on it, so you could say that Nancy Collins was the very first Vertigo writer, Right, That's when the title shifted from DC Comics to this Vertigo imprint. All because of Karen and all the wonderful folks that first started out that stuff. Uh, you will also find little cameo, not cameos, but guest stars of our favorite, where is he? Heavy smoker in a trench coat, John Constantine. And honestly, I'm surprised after her run here, because she only wrote Swamp Thing for two and a half years, from 1992 to, I think, 1994. But I'm surprised that after Swamp Thing, she didn't take over John Constantine Hellblazer. So, very surprised that didn't happen. And it's really weird that a lot of people didn't talk about her run as much as it deserves to be talked about. Because I think right after Alan Moore, you know, she's one of the top writers on Swamp Thing. Yes, we've had Scott Snyder, we had 
Brian K. Vaughn. And honestly, we've had Grant Morrison and Mark Miller on the book, and I really don't hear many people talk about those either because, well, they really weren't that great, or, to be honest with you. But yeah, I'm not sure why Nancy Collins' run doesn't get talked about often. So I was really surprised when this omnibus was solicited. I'm glad because it exists, and all these new people get to read her run for the first time. And me, I get to reread it again. So I'm excited for that. And excited for all the people that get to read it for the first time. Now, if you're wondering about the pages, the pages are glossy. And they're thick, too. So the paper quality is nice. I really like it. Now, let's take a look here at the extra. The book itself has 984 pages. And again, retails for $125. Here's that wonderful Mark Buckingham artwork. Of course, he went on to do Fables. All these artists went on to do other projects after this. All right, so here in the back, we have some pinups. Charles Vess, Arthur Adams, Glenn Fabry, Kelly Jones, Paul Ch Chadwick, Mike Mignola. I think that's Michael Zuli, if I'm not mistaken. And then a bunch of other pinups. I'm not going to go through all of them, but then you have character designs and original pencils and sketches. And then biographies. And I think, I thought there was an afterword by Nancy Collins too. But I think it might have been written for the original release. Okay, so here is the afterword. I was right, it originally was printed in the letter columns of Swamp Thing 138. It's kind of her goodbye letter. And of course, the left-hand side is censored. Just so it's not spoiled for you. Now, let's take a look at this binding. So it is sewn binding. And there is the inner spine. Has a little bit of a flex. However, I'm sure you could probably tell, even after properly opening it, like the way that I've always do my Omnis, it has a hard time staying open towards the beginning. Thinking maybe a one or two read-throughs, it'll be fine. But it's a little tight. I'm not sure why that is. As far as gutter loss, there's really not much. Mainly because of the way the art was laid out back then there's really not that many splash pages or anything it's mainly the issue of just staying open here towards the beginning and of course towards the end so i'm not really sure why that is i think it's just the design of the book i'm not sure why it the flex isn't it laying stay open because the sewn binding is fine it's good sewn binding Maybe they used excess glue. I'm not really sure. But yeah, it has a hard time staying open towards the beginning and again towards the end of the book. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, if you're interested in this book, when it comes out to the direct market, please don't forget to check out our sponsor. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for brand new graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off the cover price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on packaging your books so they arrive safely and in excellent condition, as well as prompt and helpful service. And check out their bargain bin for even greater deals up to 90% off cover price. And for you minties, Cheap Graphic Novels is renting a special promotion. If you're a first time customer, let them know you were referred by Near Mint Condition at the checkout and you'll receive a credit for free shipping on your next order. Now this is only for US customers. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discounts, quality shipping and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content of the book, the build of the book and the page count. Let me know in those comments down below if you have pre-ordered this, if you've never heard of this run and you've been curious to check it out. I hope I was able to answer your questions. And if you have any more, please leave those questions down below. You all know how much I love to talk to you all. And speaking of talk to you all, there will be another Ask Me Anything tomorrow morning, Saturday at 11 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So join us for that. It's gonna be a live chat. Last one, last Saturday was a lot of fun. So don't forget to ring that bell for notifications to let you know when the videos are going live. Hit that like button, subscribe button if you haven't yet. Don't forget to check us out on Patreon and Redbubble. It's a great way to support the channel. And all of that information is in the description down below. And more importantly, please remember everyone, stay healthy and safe out there.